Hey, I want you to meet West Penn Diesel, a dry van carrier based out of Pennsylvania. Before working with us, they had 28 trucks, six of which were sitting completely empty. They tried hiring from job boards, unemployment offices, TV commercials, newspaper ads, and almost everything else under the sun. All of these methods led to hiring and firing for almost 10 years before coming across GetTruckDrivers.com. After working with us for only nine short months, they have grown to 36 trucks and have no issues keeping them seated with qualified truck drivers. In this video, I'm talking with Rick, who's the operations manager at West Penn Diesel, to break down the switch that happened by working with us to go from 10 years of no growth whatsoever to adding 10 trucks and a waiting list of drivers. There's a ton of good information in this interview, so stick around and let's get right into it. Rick, welcome to this quick interview with me, and I appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me, I mean, I appreciate it too. Cool, so Rick, just so for everybody who's watching this, um, can you briefly describe about your business and what you do, your role in the company? Yeah, we are a freight carrier. We have, right now we're up to, I think, 38 trucks. We started off um, about a year ago with um, 22 trucks. And we had 28 trucks. We only had 22 on the road. We had six on the and we had 36 And we, we have some guys still sitting on the hook. Um, we're going to end up having 33 of them full by the middle of June. We always keep these guys primarily run Midwest and South. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, nice. That's long for that. And what kind of business, just so for everybody to understand, like what kind of trucking company do you own? Like do you haul drive in, reefer, just for everybody yeah, else? We're, we're all drive in. Uh, we originally started off here in the 90s, late 90s. Uh, Actually, a local triaxle company. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. Sometime in 2000, 2001, we started buying it. And over the years, we've converted away from it all together, and we were all driving. No, uh, no freight trucks at all. I mean, no, no, no dump trucks at all. For freight trucks. So we have uh, about 60 driving, no one driving, in our fleet, and we hit 36. Uh, we haul a lot of uh, general mm -hmm. commodities, like you know, everybody. Got it. Got it. So can you share with me like where you were before meeting us and and also after working with us? I know you kind of touched that a little bit in terms of like, I don't know, revenue growth, amount of trucks, drivers, however you want to share it with people watching this. Uh, when we started, we were doing just like everybody else, but now that in papers, we talk radio, we talk television, um, we tried monster.com, unemployment office, everything you could think of, and we, we, we could think of, I say, not everything you could think of, but obviously you have something different. And um, it's just the same, same old, we weren't finding any guys. Mm -hmm. Nobody that was worth considering. I guess our name just wasn't getting out there, the right people. I tried doing it on Facebook, mm -hmm. get a hit here and there, you might get a guy in there, you get you know, you feel like it's just a, it was a waste of your time spinning your wheels and um, was posting around at somebody who applied and uh, on their website it came across GetTruckDrivers.com and I just wondered what that even was so then I started poking around and that's when I called you and mm -hmm. you were like where in the heck did you come from you know and <laughs> here we are now and we as I said we started off um, we had 28 here this time 21, 22, and had drivers. Couldn't do anybody. We had one, two would quit. Two, one would quit. It, it just, we just, they were staying stagnant at that number. And I uh, couldn't get anybody in the door that was, you know, worth hiring and worth keeping. And, uh, how long, how long did you stay at like that, that place of like 21, 22, 23 trucks running? 10 years. Wow. You know, we, we must get up to be 28. And then, you know, you have that. We call it the spring parade. Everybody in the spring would leave. We didn't have that in this year. Um, it'll be the first time, I think, in probably nine or ten years that we haven't had a whole bunch of guys leave in the spring just because that's what happened. Wow. Um, so we 
you started in June of last year, so it's coming up on a year. And you remember it's kind of a rough year yeah. for with with you guys. It, it didn't go as you expected, it didn't go as all planned. Some guys that came that um, was a bad And um, so on, mm-hmm. excuse me, we couldn't get, we just weren't getting anybody, so we were going to relaunch again. And it was probably, what was it, by September? Uh-huh. The time we finally started rolling and we're getting guys in the door and we started you know, all the trucks we had filled up and how do we keep them? And then, you know, here we are now um, a year later and we have a waiting list. Um drivers actually um, I know you don't like to hear this, but I'm gonna say it again. I can't quit <laughs> advertising because I had too many people come in. Hey, before you keep watching, I have to tell you about something that will help your trucking business. If you are looking to get the results we've been talking about in this interview, I have a program where we help trucking companies hire an extra 15 to 30 qualified drivers every single month without hiring a recruitment agency or using job boards or offering ridiculous sign-on bonuses ever again. If you are a trucking business that has over 10 trucks and are looking to expand, click the link in the description and I'll see you on the other side. Not advertising, go back once we have trucks available. Mm-hmm. And I haven't had to, it's been February or March since I've done anything. Wow. I still have people calling um, and they say they're seeing an ad on Facebook, which I don't know where they're seeing an ad. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I still have a waiting list. And mm-hmm. mid June, we'll have just like this, like this, like this, like this. Right. And mm-hmm. They'll be ready to go. And we already have enough guys ready to sit. A few of them are giving their notice. Uh-huh. Um, we've already gone for drug tests and paperwork. You know, one's come in today for paperwork. The other one's going to be in um, the first week of doing for paperwork, and then he'll start the second week of doing the other guy's starting next week. Wow. So two, and then two more. We mm-hmm. have to decide when and, when and which one we're going to have. And um, the other thing he's always told us, too, that we never did this. We're not there to get rid of anybody. Mm-hmm. We you get what you expect when it comes to an employee, and we've learned to get what you expect. You can hire somebody, try to train them, try to get to do what you want, the way you want them to do it. And if they don't work out, you can actually move on from them instead of keeping a, um, a dead body. And you had done that in the past because you guys couldn't fill that truck and you're like, let's make this work, let's make this work. And then you're like, if you're not productive, dude, you're off the bench. Like you're out of the truck, I'm bringing the next guy in. So you feel like you have that power now? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Yeah, it's gotten to the point where we, we give you, you know, we don't give you two, three weeks or you know, I mean, three, four, five months, we give, give you a chance and we get to work with you. And, um, so far, we've only had one that we've had to do that with, but it's, um, it feels bad to have to let somebody go, but it's, it's uh, nice to at least know you'll have an unfortunate mm-hmm. pay and it, we can do that and um, go business with quality guys instead of nice. more older. Wow, I love it. This is this is more than what you you've told me. Like when we've spoken, you know, one on one. This is great. I love this. So going from, so you're a true success story because ten years you guys weren't able to grow. You're just maintaining the fleet the best you can, hoping it stays at that level. And now, boom! Like basically in like ten nine months, eight months really, you've like added. 10 more trucks or 33% growth in your business. Yeah. Wow. That yeah. is amazing. And you're growing with the right kind of drivers and you can be picky about them too. Would that yeah. be a fair statement? Absolutely. And we're, we're being a little um, more picky about it. Well, which I know again, you don't like that either. No, that's good. I like that. I mean, I mean, no, I, mean, I think that's you know, great. The way you know, we try to do things in, in our whole entire um, or all the lands are out, you know, just did the team to work. We, we couldn't get anybody that would fit what we needed, what we wanted, and how we wanted it to work. Mm-hmm. And we tightened up, and it, it, so far, it, we're, we're, we're happy with the results. And we hope that they continue to go this way. 
doing fairly well. As long as we, you know, continue to be the way we are and do what we're supposed to do and mm-hmm. you know, we, need, we need to lean on you. That's something I try to not do also is uh-huh. to not be a burden with whoever's helping me. You know? so. I know your personality for sure. So let me ask you this. So what what were the main challenges you faced before? Um, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but let me give you more context. Did you feel that the only way to grow and get new drivers was the job boards or the recruitment platforms that you were using? That that was the only source for you? What has changed for you, really? Over the years, we knew there was something. We didn't know what or where, how to find it. There's, there's no way all these other trucking companies are going to could grow from 10 or 15 trucks to 90, 100 in three or four years. And, Mm-hmm. Not something else, whether it was you know your, your platform or somebody else's, um, which I don't know if there's anything else out, out there like this, to be honest with you. Thank um, you. But we just didn't know where to go. And, you know, and we finally started finding uh-huh. the boards that were worth using about two years ago. And they helped us a little bit, but nothing like this. Uh, there's no way to explain it until you experience it. Um, mm-hmm. You have to be a carrier that you said is open minded. Um, willing to do what you're told instead of doing what you think you need to do because you know, if you own a company, you know how to do things and when you really don't when it comes to recruiting. <laughs> so yeah. there's no way to say that. Uh, if mm-hmm. you think you know it all, then just keep doing what you're doing and good luck to you. Um, if you're willing to be open minded and be uncomfortable mm-hmm. for a while, uh, then this, this is it. Be uncomfortable because that's. That's what being a business owner is about. If you're uh-huh. uncomfortable, you're not going to succeed. I wish everybody would be the same way you are in terms of growth. I mean, most people are. Like, l- l- let me put it this way. Most people that I, you attract who you are, right? So so I tend to attract people who are kind of like me, which is kind of like you, right? So most of the people that I'm bringing, and I'm sure you remember in commitments, I asked during our enrollment call, I'm like, hey, time, open-minded, decision-maker, I, I don't know if you remember that chunk, like but that's like do. that's like Bible to us here. Yeah. So, how has your process changed, uh, or how has your process for hiring drivers have changed since working with us? All it's changed is we have more guys to pick from, so you can be more picky instead of just taking whoever comes in the door. So we actually have, you know, mm-hmm. and, but, you know, when you go from mm-hmm. one one guy a month, I help. In 20, what, what is this? 2024, 2023. But 2022 to 2023, uh-huh. we spent $60,000 and I got three drivers, okay? In, in like 14 or 15 months. We just, it was pointless. And um, I didn't spend that much. I think we did. Let me just do the math here real quick. Sure. We were at about, we were probably around 30 so far and we've grown it effectively. Wow. So you've actually if we put an ROI to it, so you put thirty K in and you've grown by additional fifteen ten ten to fifteen trucks and then thirty three percent. And then that's a good that's that was just in the in the time from you know like July until February. And Mm -hmm. remember I haven't done anything since February because I haven't haven't needed to because I you know Guys, we all have a good. Mm-hmm. We're, you know, every time we have a we already have somebody lined up. Um, yeah. I know it's going to get to a point where I'm going to need to. Again, it's going to come, and it's going to come sooner than, you know, than, than later. But it's been it's been a nice wave, we'll say, to ride for the time being. <laughs> and, you know, and mm-hmm. seeing that the freight is the way it is right now, we're, we're happy that we've been able to grow. We don't want to keep everybody busy, but we don't want to grow too and not the ability to keep everybody moving. Because if you, know, you don't keep driving in the mile, then they're going to leave and you're going to start to so, you know, we're, we're going to go slow during this time, get the drivers in the seats, and then when things pick up, hopefully everybody stays with us, or at least the majority of them. And when things pick up, we, we know we'll have to leave because that's just you know, the nature of it. Is, uh-huh. You know, they, they take the, the dog. Right. But Rick, just to note of, since you touched on this, <clears throat> most trucking companies that I know of, and I'm sure you know of, they have not grown small or big in the last 
two one and a half year, I would say, with the freight recession, the way the market is. So you being able to still grow that much as a, even a small carrier, that's huge. I think so. And I'm not trying to be nice to you. I'm just being very real. No, I think it's been big. It's been nice to be able to have people. It's been nice to, you know, and getting the right people. It's just not, like I said, not just, just anybody. Most of these guys are like, Mm-hmm. They're, they're just normal people like you and I that want to work, make a living, and get home on the weekend. Nice. And, and be treated like a human being instead of a commodity. Like that. I like that. Can you describe, <clears throat> Rick, the time commitment required from your end during this collaboration with us? And what responsibilities did you have? And what did we take care of? You mean time commitment at the beginning or overall? Because beginning and overall. The beginning, the beginning was a really time. The first five to six days, it, it was you had to sit down and commit, do you know, do the do the uh, the module, go through what you're so, you know, supposed to, get uh-huh. done, and you know, take the criticism and fix whatever <laughs> mistakes you made, and uh, and move on. Uh, so there was a big commitment at the beginning. Uh, the real big commitment once the guy really coming in and having a good commitment to um, sorting through them and seeing who you wanted to call, who you didn't want to call. Maybe you called everybody at first and, you know, find out that it's a, this is the type of person I want, this is what they look like on paper. Uh-huh. Um, so once it got rolling and once you got that figured out, mm-hmm. it was, the phone calls were crazy too. You were getting phone calls from people. It, it was just not, I want to say non stop. It was the beginning of the wagon, but it was mm-hmm. consistent enough that you were always talking to some, at least one to five people a day about you know, the driving condition. Uh, whether you, you know, the people that you call, and you, know, you call people on top of that. Yeah, there's a big commitment to making the calls. But once it was rolling, and uh-huh. uh, not only do I do recruiting, I do sales, uh, I help do payroll, I help mm-hmm. do accounts. You know, so. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm I'm here doing a little bit of everything, and it's a lot easier now to manage everything since I'm mm-hmm. constantly um, uh-huh. being run off the wall trying to find drivers. You know, you know, now I can commit to other things. So there's less of a commitment to get rolling. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's great. That's huge for somebody watching this, being able to relate with you that hey, like you know, this is not some woo woo thing, like there's somebody like me who's been able to achieve these kind of results and hire that many drivers while having all these other responsibilities. Yep. Um, you can overwhelm yourself too. Uh, I did that for the first, you know, probably. You went through that phase. Where we started getting leads. Anytime a lead would come in at two o'clock in the morning, I would get up and make a call because I knew they were, they were, they were really in And it got to a point where it was like, I needed to <laughs> So, her notifications off at night, mm-hmm. go through the night, come in the morning. If they answer the phone, great. If they didn't, and if they're lost, they want to call me back. And that's how I end up you know, doing that after maybe like four to six weeks, of like two or three hours of sleep every night. It's like, okay, I'm doing that. I'm sure your wife wasn't too happy about it, but you were doing what you needed to do. It's easy to use that because you're in the same industry and things happen in the middle of the night. It's just not that type of thing usually to break down. <laughs> a locker or you know something yeah, like that. I think it's a phase that you go through as a trucking business where it's like you've never had that many applications or when you get any attention you're like man I need to cap- capitalize on it so it's a, it's a natural reaction it's a Absolutely. good and I didn't want her to stop you on it because it's a, actually a good habit and then you kind of calibrate like okay now I know how I want to channel this better but at least you have good habits from the get go why am I saying this is because bigger trucking companies the recruiters are so spoiled that it's like you always always have to push them to, you know, call the leads in timely manner and get to people in the right fashion. Right. Well, again, we don't have recruiters. I am a recruiter. You know, my sister would help a little bit. My dad, he was, you know, also recruited. So, you know, that, that was things I could at least have legit phone numbers off that were good ones to call instead of wasting everybody's time. Mm-hmm. So, I make the initial call and then, you know, off my dad then he talked this a little bit see what you think and then uh, you know we uh-huh. on. whereas before it was like okay you're good come on in 
Wow. You can hold the steering wheel. You're good. Come on in. So based, based on the results so far, Rick, where do you see your business in the next six to 12 months? Hang on the market. I say the market, you know, the, the way the freight is. I mean, you know, if it stays the way it is, probably maybe two or three more, you know, it'll be it until things pick up. And so, you know, and 40. Um, mm-hmm. I would say in the next 24 to 48 months, would like to be around 50. We grow slow. We don't grow here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a different way of looking at things than a lot of carriers. We, we, we don't always have new equipment. Drive in, yeah. Tractors, no. We'll buy tractors that are you know, three to five years old and pay for it. We don't find it. So that, that it's like uh-huh. slower growth because you want to be able to, you know, have that equipment that your payments are going to be your mind. Oh. Yeah, but it's, right. it's, it's, it's a different, you know, philosophy we have to all the so, And everybody we, has, we, yes, we do, I'm not saying we don't, but we just, I mean, is we open up here as a repair. We mm-hmm. work on everything. We work on transmission, rear end, and mm-hmm. tires, brakes, everything. We work on everything possible. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we, we can fix anything in this center that because a lot of people can't do that. Uh huh. Um, so that's where we that's where we are able to start is having an older stuff that we can work on and get out there. And we also are excited over that um, we have a tow truck, which that sounds goofy to have a tow truck. But if we break down, we're not going to sit on the side of the road for you know, three, four days or in a truck stop or at a motel. The driver is going to have a, a truck. Um, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Within, if it's eight hours away, within 10 hours, he has a truck. He's in a truck, and we're telling the other one to fix it. You know, um, we just found that it's more economical. So, how do you do that? Do you have like a dedicated driver that knows how to do the towing, or do you do it? How does that work? We have a mechanic that like, he, he works in the shop, and then um, by the time he's down, he's the one that goes out and then tows. Wow. That's a huge, that's a huge thing. Like most trucking companies don't have anything like what you got. Yeah, the big ones. Yeah, that, yeah we, th- we thought that was big. And we've only had a tow truck for three years, but it's been the, the biggest that I think of anything else that we've had here. And you know, mm-hmm. getting it down to comfort in the thing. I mean, I don't know if it's the place to talk about that, but we do things in our trucks that most carriers don't do too. So, you know, guys will always complain about yeah. it with trucks. We don't have that complaint just because of what we do. You know, right. you know they just don't like switching trucks, but when you all have food and food and clothes, it's just like a game changer for a guy. Mm. You go into the truck and if it's with everything you need to live, all you need is your food and your clothes, you move on. Wow. Okay. So were you surprised, <clears throat> were you surprised, um, you kind of touched on this in some ways, but to ask you like point blank, were you surprised by the results you got working with us? Yes, absolutely. Yep. You know, I didn't know what I could expect at first. And once we signed up and what? signed on, it's like, okay, yeah, this is definitely <laughs> not what I expected. You didn't have a clue what to expect. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, the results were, you know, for us, like I said, they weren't immediate, but they were within a couple of months. You know, which is not as quick as you would like to see it. And we went in there instead of going. And uh-huh. here we are. So, yeah, absolutely. The results were um, phenomenal. It, it was, there's no, Thank you. There's nothing else that you can do. That, you know, as a carrier, if you don't know about this, you're, you're not going to, um, I don't think you're not going to figure it out, but it's not going to be a thing. You're not going to have all the, all the tools uh-huh. that are uh, in the back. Wow, that is amazing. So if someone's on the fence about working with us, what would you tell them? What would I tell them? Yep. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't need any more competition. So if that tells you, you know, if you're on the fence, don't do it because I don't want your competition. I'll just keep taking that. <laughs> so, so take that as you will. It's just the opposite is what it you know, really is. If, if you want to get the you better do it. Mm-hmm. Because the competition in this niche isn't there. 
it, 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 it's it's completely different than anything mm-hmm. that you will think mm-hmm. of as a carrier. And if you think you thought of it, then go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. Obviously, you're calling for a reason, just like I did. And, um, you know, Rick, it's interesting that you say that a lot of carriers, ironically, feel the same way, jokingly, even what you just said, like, I have people like last week, I visited a company in Oregon, you know, 400 trucks, and they were like, I was like, hey, Matt, what would you tell another trucking company who was looking to, work? you know, I, was, I wasn't even doing something like this. It was just a fun thing. And he was like, Amber, to be very real with you, like, I just want to keep you a secret. Like, I don't even want people to know. About you. And I've gotten trucking companies who, I've seen trucking companies who are, who are current clients or active clients or past clients who've gotten kind of upset that we work, like, work with somebody not too far away from them, you know, and it, in in a positive or a negative, however you want to say it, but they were like, man, like they're gonna have not the edge that we have, right? In some ways. Well, it's not just about having the edge. I mean, the edge just gets the, the driver's foot in the door. You're full of BS and just telling a guy what they want to hear. They're gonna figure it out, mm-hmm. and you're gonna you're gonna have turnover. So um, that's something that my dad and I have a difference of opinion on. He doesn't. He makes he tells him. I tell them about everything. If you like it, great. If you don't, then don't come here. Because um, I want you to come because you came for the right reasons, because of what we are. And get in it. Because it's not, you know, you rainbows and unicorns and, you know, and <laughs> chocolate covered cake with chocolate icing all the time. It's, you know, sometimes, <laughs> you, you know, uh-huh. you're just falling apart. You know, and it's just what it is. Sometimes at a time, you'll have two or three weeks in a row because who knows what. It's just the, the customers you all go to it and it just makes you in a in, in a bad way and, and it's going to happen mm-hmm. but if you're somebody who tells everybody that's all good here all the time there's never any problem and you get them in the door and they think it's you know, more BS to it than, you know, than what you told me then you know it is what it is the other thing too uh-huh. um, all of any driver that comes to Coming on Monday, coming on a Friday. Talk to anybody that's in the yard. I don't care. Talk to any driver. Talk to anybody that works here. I have absolutely no problem with having nothing to hide. And if everyone's going to have their complaints. Everyone's going to have their issues. But all in all, I don't think we have any drivers here that are unhappy. I mean, they have a good and bad day. They have a good and bad week. But we do everything we can here to be right with guys. And we tell them that right from the get go. But we also tell them, you know, that. There's going to be shit. It's going to happen. And if you can't handle the truth and handle that there's going to be problems, then we're not the place to do. I love that. Even <clears throat> that is great that you're saying lot lot of fleets. I know this firsthand because I go visit them and then I can see the hesitation. Where like, wow, this guy is a little bit grumpy. Amber, I don't think you want to talk to him too much. Where it's like, you know, you're saying. I understand when you get on scale, when you have three, four, five hundred trucks, you're always going to have a few people that are going to be like, just, right. you know, Debbie, the downers, right? Lack of better words. And, but it's very refreshing to hear from you that you've kept that positive culture and you're doing everything you possibly can to make sure the guys are satisfied for the most part. Right. Right. Yeah, and I'm not saying that there's another couple of guys who are there, you know, they're happy. They're mm-hmm. happy. You know, they, they just want to complain because this is what they do. That's how they live life. <laughs> if they're still here, you know, all these guys, I'm just trying to look at names. I'm not going to say anything. The guys that are looking on the list here, I can see uh-huh. the store three, the third one's kind of eh, as far as, you know, the attitude. But they're still here. And some of them have been here for eight and ten years. Wow. But they come in, they complain about life, they complain about, you know, complain about this, but they still go and do their job. And they come home at the end of the week. And and that's how they communicate, right? Those those, those are people. That, that's how they talk. So, and sometimes you kind of mess with them and give them a hard time, back and they're like, "Okay, yeah, I know I'm being an asshole." So. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Well, thank you for sharing all of this with me. This is very valuable for you know another trucking company like yourself who may be in the same shoes where you were, you know, a year ago or you know five years ago. Any final thoughts you would like to tell the viewers? If you do this, commit and do go for it. Don't um, don't 
I'm sorry, not saying don't question, but try to not stray away from the path of what they tell you to do because it works. Um, as another server says, this shit works. <laughs> <laughs> and I will agree with that. It, it, it works. It's just a matter of you have to commit, you have to do, you have to just do it. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say. You just um, don't mm -hmm. be afraid and don't be weak. If you are in the ring industry. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Rick. That was very cool. And I appreciate you being with us.